when you look at the sky at night, what do you see? If you're among the 20% of Americans who can still see the magnificent Milky Way, you're in for a spectacular sight. However, if you're part of the 80% living with light pollution, you may only see a few stars or maybe nothing at all. A full one-third of humanity can no longer see the Milky Way with a naked eye. Light pollution contributes to a changing climate by wasting energy and disrupting natural systems that regulate our planet's biosphere. Dark skies, meaning the absence of light pollution, are critical to many migratory species. They rely on an unobstructed view of the constellations, stars, and planets to find their way. This bird, mammal, and insect species necessary to our ecosystems face light pollution challenges. The monarch butterfly population has decreased by 90% since the 1980s due to loss of habitat and safe travel. We depend on butterflies to pollinate many plant species, including essential crops. Each migration season, Tracy Avery leads the Salt Lake Avian Collision Survey, tracking bird fatalities and gathering data to protect future flocks. Several organizations support a lifestyle program during spring and fall migration seasons to help animals stay safe and survive. Flip the switch and nature begins to heal. It's one small action we can all take to make a big difference. In Miami, volunteers rescue newly hatched sea turtles disoriented by the city's lights, turning them around to safety in the ocean. The US Fish and Wildlife Services is in working to improve lighting conditions the Desert National Wildlife Refuge. Their efforts will protect fish and amphibians, which are more sensitive to light than humans. As cities grow, we encounter more excessive and misdirected light, called light trespass. Dark Sky International, the world's leading authority fighting light pollution, estimates that at least 30% of all outdoor lighting in the US alone is wasted mostly by lights that aren't shielded. Think of a camera flash going off in a concert. It's meant to highlight something, but ends up blinding those around it and adding nothing useful to the moment. The electricity used to generate this undirected and unshielded light costs over $3 billion annually. This estimate does not include the cost of damaged ecosystems. To offset the pollution produced by this wasted light, we would need to plant 875 million trees each year. Light should only be used where and when it's needed. With proper direction, shielding, we can improve visibility while reducing trespass and glare. And light should be warmer in color to provide clarity and reduce the blue light that strains our eyes, disrupts our sleep, and could potentially affect our long-term health. Turning off the lights at night sounds simple enough, but in many Western cultures, darkness is sometimes linked to evil and danger. We tell stories about the boogeyman and monsters under the bed. How many children and how many adults are afraid of the dark? Because of this, we've adopted overlighting and inappropriate lighting as a means to make our streets look safer. Ironically, it can actually increase risk. Our vision takes time to adjust between fluctuations and brightness, where a mix of lights can create unsafe spaces. Punitive lighting, including overlighting, using large flood lamps and spotlights, generally takes place in lower income, higher ethnic diversity neighborhoods. Punitive lighting is misguided, often paired with surveillance intended to reduce crime, 
further alienating and marginalizing these communities. However, communities using punitive lighting have found that crime stayed the same or even increased. Nearly all street lights in Tucson, Arizona are set to 90% brightness, their maximum capacity. At midnight, most lights are dimmed to 60%. In 2019, researchers performed a 10-day study. Instead of dimming to 60% at midnight, most lights were turned down to 30%. The difference in street light brightness was nearly imperceptible. The city received no comments or complaints during the project while enjoying considerable savings. If all lights could be dimmed just a bit, as Tucson did, we would reduce energy costs, increase safety, and cut light pollution. You've probably had headlights temporarily blind you, either coming directly head on or in the rearview mirror. Glare from vehicles and street lights can make roads more dangerous, especially for pedestrians and cyclists. Older drivers and people with early cataracts are particularly at risk. Glare at night or in tunnels has been linked to higher risk of accidents. We're all acquainted with light trespass. That sleep disturbance that comes from a street light, bright lights from a passing vehicle, or perhaps an overly enthusiastic holiday display from a neighbor. <laughs> Too much light harms the ability to rest. Using blackout curtains or eye masks can help. Plants also suffer from continuous light including street lights. However, they don't get the relief of blackout curtains or eye masks. Much like humans and animals, plants need to sleep. Keeping the lights on stops plants from resting. A recent study found that trees exposed to artificial light develop tougher leaves, which are inedible to insects. So the whole food chain is disrupted. Light pollution is also linked to other problems. Night shift workers are especially at risk. Most of their light comes from artificial sources, throwing off their natural sleep cycles and affecting their health. One of the largest health studies ever conducted, the Nurses Health Study, found that working second and third shifts was associated with higher stress levels, increased blood pressure, obesity, and diabetes. These serious health risks affect millions of people working non-traditional schedules. And the concern doesn't stop there. In 2024, a major review of scientific literature found strong associations between breast cancer rates, which were nearly 9% higher for people who lived or worked in artificial brighter environments, whether indoors or outside. That's not a tiny bump. That's meaningful. On a global scale, a separate study looking at data from nearly 160 countries showed brighter aerial lighting was tied to higher risks of lung, breast, and colorectal cancers. All this points to a simple truth. Light at night isn't harmless. And for those who work against the rhythm of natural daylight, the health consequences can be far-reaching. Astronomers look to the night sky to study the universe's past. Many cultures rely on the constellations for sacred ceremonies. But satellite trains, groups of satellites moving together on the same path have become so bright and frequent, they're disrupting the view. How tragic it would be to lose these practices and traditions. We're quickly losing dark skies. It is more difficult to mend something that is broken than to protect and preserve it. Unlike air and water pollution, where it could take decades to fix, we have a dark sky solution right now. In Utah, we have vast expanses of immaculate skies. Our state, has more dark sky certified places than anywhere else on Earth.
That includes all five national parks, six national monuments, and nine state parks. Astrotourism is a growing industry. Many communities, including Helper Utah, where University of Utah students collaborate with the town, are proudly and actively sharing their dark skies with visitors and residents alike. As author Craig Childs reminds us, a night sky is not an absence of light. It is the presence of the universe. Turn down the lights, look up, and let the universe shine through.